It was back in 1997 that I left Holland to travel around the world and as I've been fly fishing all my life as from a little kid already obviously I took my fly rod along it was really upon coming to Chile upon coming to Patagonia that I knew this is the place where I wanted to be it was the sheer beauty of the country the spectacular rivers with fantastic fishing in it but I think even more than that the fact that there was nobody around so in your mind you see yourself as a pioneer, you start to romanticize ideas, I can do something that nobody ever has done. So then I came up with the idea to build a fishing lodge and really when I was able to buy this beautiful piece of property on the Rio Palena, I really thought about my base camp program. I really wanted to make, build one lodge with a few satellite lodges. And over the years that program worked out pretty well uh, with a bunch of very good guides, good equipment I could buy but especially with a bunch of very good clients who come back every year, we started to build, develop our fishing program. And the area is very vast. It's very big and too hard to fish it well from one single place. So then my base camp idea really fell into place. I, over the years, I, I bought more pieces of property, one on the Rio Figueroa where we built our temple camp lodge and one on upstream from our base camp lodge on the Rio Palena. So now, having those outpost camps, we were able to fish the whole area, all the way from the Argentine border to the ocean, which is a pretty large area. Right next to you, Eric. Sit right there. Look. 
See the bamboo hanging over? No one at the bamboo. Good. Tut, tut. There you go. Leave it, leave it. Here he comes. Set, set, set. a boy. It's hard not to romanticize Patagonia. Uh, I've been coming here for seven seven seasons, and each year I think it, it's it's a bigger part of me. Um, I can't imagine a better place uh, to be a, to be a fisherman. It's not uncommon for me to to float you know, 40 miles of a river over the course of three days and, and not see another person, let alone another fisherman. And, and this landscape behind you, this hanging glaciers and craggy peaks and just these unbelievably thick forests, it's, it's, it's just surreal. It's really a surreal setting. And just miles and miles of, of untamed rivers, wild freestone rivers, uh, sprinkled with lakes and lagunas, all of which that you know, hold browns and rainbows that every fisherman would love to catch. When you factor in the fishing, it's it's just it's an incredible spot because the, you don't see fish behavior uh, other places like you do here. You don't see the the predatory nature of, of the trout uh, anywhere else that I've ever fished. And uh, to watch a, a big fish you know, chase down a streamer or, or eat a, a size two dry fly, I mean, where else does that happen? It doesn't happen anywhere else that I know of. And to watch a, a, a poorly presented fly drag across the surface and just get pounded by a big fish, that, that stuff doesn't happen anywhere else. It, it scares fish in other places, and here it makes them eat. It makes them eat. And it, there's, there's nothing quite like it. It's, it's big fish and big flies and big country, I mean, it's big landscape, and there's, there's nothing about this place that's easy except the fishing. It's a, it's a tough life, it's a, it's, it's, it's a kind of a rugged country, and everything's rock, and it just, it's, it's a difficult place to be, but it, it, it's, a, it's an amazing place to, to be at the same time, and I've never seen anything like it. And I've, I've seen the other side, I've seen Patagonia and Argentina, and it, it's a whole other world. And I've fished extensively in the United States, and you can't match the solitude that, that we have here. And we're fortunate because we have so much water to choose from. It, nothing compares to this, nothing. And each year, I think, okay, I've, I've seen it, I've done it, and this is it. And each following year, I come back. and. You know, I don't come back uh, because I have nothing better to do. I come back because I can't stay away from it. I mean, I, I just love it here.
My name is Craig Boyd. I was born and raised in Calgary, Alberta. I now reside in Bozeman, Montana, and I'm lucky enough to be down here at Patagonian Base Camp as their director of fun and uh, their uh, whitewater specialist. Uh, what's unique about Patagonian Base Camp is we have a lot of different waters with which to fish. Uh, one of the unique situations that we do have, uh, as I was saying earlier, is the whitewater. Uh, we fish two different stretches of river, both the Rosslot and the Figueroa, that have uh, class four and class five whitewater situations in them. Um, and we're unique in the fact that we're able to provide uh, folks the ability to fish in and around these waters uh, and enjoy the whitewater as well as fish this pristine portion of Patagonia. In here, we're able to use uh, specific rafts that we use for whitewater to get into these remote canyons. Um, the rafts are situated with platforms to stand on as well as places to sit. So you're able to see a different view from the trout than you would from just fishing the bank. You're able to, to fish uh, in and around back eddies and through canyons and get close to where the fish are without spooking them making it a really unique advantage. It's a very visual style of fishing. Well, whether they're taking a streamer or they're eating a dry fly, and because of the boats that we're fishing out of, you can see the takes. The fish will come up to your beetle or to your dragonfly and they'll slowly sip it, which is a really unique part of the fishing here.
These fish a lot of times are ambush feeders. Um, they're waiting for something to fall in the water and they take advantage of that. So you'll have a fish that'll come a long ways to eat a big meal and they'll expend that energy in order to have that dragonfly or that beetle in their mouth. The Kintari beetle is uh, a very large terrestrial insect uh, that we're able to fish throughout the season, um, starting uh, about the third week of January and, and fishing it all the way till uh, the, the second week of April. The fish are looking for that large terrestrial insect on the surface that they can eat. You know, they can eat one Kintara beetle versus 30 mayflies. And that's why you're not going to see a lot of fish looking up. But, you know, if you drift that big insect under, underneath those beech trees or bamboo along the banks, you're, you're definitely going to get an explosion and, uh, and definitely going to make your day. Uh, and that's, that's one of the, the more unique things that we have here. You know, the, the stonefly fishing here in Patagonia is kind of what kicks our season off. Um, it, it gets our fish looking up in the springtime season. And, and what we get, um, our main hatch of stoneflies are the golden stoneflies. And those are our most single-handedly important stoneflies here in Patagonia. Um, you know, the stoneflies will, will start migrating to the shore and those trout will really start to key in on those nymphs because the nymphs are crawling from the bottom of the rocks and the river and crawling onto shore to, to emerge and so what happens is those trout really start to be pushed up on the banks and, and looking for those nymphs that are making their way to shore.
today we have puyes. Puyes are little fishes from here, from the area. They just come in the early spring and it's really difficult to have. It's the first season we have it here. Then I'm very proud to have it in your table. Enjoy. Oh, thank you, man. Being able to offer this diversity to our clients, which actually are not clients anymore, they're just friends, they come back every year. We are able to offer such a fantastic variety in the fishing. And now living here after all those years together with my wife, Carolina, having our friends visiting us and our little girl, Elena, and a new baby on the way. It's just a fabulous way to spend your life, I think. It's so beautiful here. We're very happy to be able to live here. And I think very fortunate also.